Okay, in this video we're going to look at the idea of sectioning where you have a complex surface. So you see I have these three surfaces shown and this is actually um, a lamp uh, made by a, a company called PATH and the top three images are the resulting lofted surfaces from some profile curves. So at the bottom you see a series of these three profile curves and the idea with sectioning is, or one of the principles of sectioning, or one of the questions of sectioning is, how do we take a complex surface and then create rhino geometry that will allow us to fabricate this? And in this case, that would be done on either the laser cutter or the CNC machine. So if I move through some of these images, you'll actually see how this lamp is constructed. So there's some horizontal sections. You see this nice one with this cloverleaf pattern and it has the three holes in it. And then you see all these vertical slats that the slats actually fit into slots from the horizontal geometry. So the question is how do you generate this geometry? For instance, how do you make these horizontal curves and these vertical curves of complex geometry without painfully drawing each one. So using Rhino, uh, through the power of Rhino and some techniques, we can extract the data for these horizontal and vertical slats from the Rhino surfaces that, uh, that we lofted. Okay, so over in Rhino, I have a series of curves that I'm going to loft together. Now throughout this whole tutorial it's important that we keep a set of layers for our horizontal curves and our vertical curves. So you see I have a few layers set up. I have curves and I have surfaces. Well I'm going to change the name of this curves layer. I'm going to abbreviate this uh, for horizontal curves and I have my surfaces layer. Now the other thing that I'm going to need for both the horizontal and vertical slats is I'm going to need an inside and an outside so that this will have a thickness. So for example if I was to offset um, a curve and I'm going to use, so this is the scale of this of these circles from uh, circles or ellipses from the bottom to the top is five inches so I'm going to use an offset thickness of 0.125 inches, so an eighth, one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and offset these outward. Now I'm going to make my horizontal curves layer current so that when I offset these, it'll actually be on the current layer. Okay, change that one to the horizontal curve layer. Now what's important, so now you see I have the inside and the outside rings. Now what's important when I loft the surfaces, and I'll start with the inside. I'll go ahead and I'll loft those. Okay, and I'll put that on my surfaces layer. So what's important is that this is not a poly surface, that it's one single surface. So I type, if I type in the command what, I'm going to see that it's a valid surface, not a valid poly surface. Because you'll see in a couple steps forward, I won't be able to do what I need to with a poly surface. Okay, so I'm just going to select that one. That's my inner surface, and I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Now I'm going to make the surface, make my surfaces layer current. I'm going to make the outer surface the same way. I'm just selecting these from bottom to top in order that I want them. And I'm going to go ahead and loft this. Okay, now you see the geometry is, uh, you know, has many more of these vertical lines. And um, I could rebuild it through the loft options, but I'm just going to show you. When I select that surface and I type in what, you see it's a valid poly surface. Poly surface with four surfaces. I need that to be one single surface. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete this surface. I'm going to have to rebuild these curves because 
when I offset, that was where the problem uh, occurred. When I offset these curves, the, the geometry is no longer native nerves um, geometry. It's an offset curve, and then it gave me many more line segments so that when I lofted it, I was left with a poly surface. But I can rebuild the curves. So the inside was fine. It's the outside that I'm, I'm just rebuilding. Um, and I can rebuild that. And I'm going to make the degree... Uh, you see right now the default happened to be degree one um, so I'm getting these facets but if I put in a degree three uh, I'm gonna get a curve uh, a much smoother curve and for the point count right now is is 10 um, and as long as it's keeping the curvature the way I want it that's fine I can always increase the point count or decrease it okay it's gonna put that on the, the current layer so I want to make sure my horizontal curves is the current layer as I'm doing this so I just need to go through and rebuild the the remaining outside outside curves okay this one that geometry got a little tight uh, so let's try rebuilding that with some more points. It got a little close to the inside. What I can do is I can offset this just a little bit more. So let's try like 0.05. Let's go a little more, how about point, uh, point zero 0.08. Okay, just to get that free of that. Now I probably have to rebuild this as well since I offset it. Okay, so now let's go ahead now and loft the outside curves. Okay, and I'm going to put that on my surfaces layer. Alright, so now when I select it and type in what, that's a valid surface. Okay, now I've hidden the, in the inner curve. I'll start with the outer curve. So what I need, so I'm just going to make the horizontal, um, the horizontal slats. And right now, uh, if we look at this, by itself we don't have very many horizontal okay we have the base we have uh, a couple of these rings and then the top so what I can do is I can rebuild this surface so I type in rebuild so we we rebuilt curves uh, previously now we're rebuilding the surface and the degree can stay three and three now I need to define how many uh, slats I want. So I'm going to put in 10 uh, in the U and 8 and I can get a preview in it. It's really hard to see in the preview until you actually hit OK. Okay, so now I, I have more horizontal and I have some vertical as well. And you can you can experiment by changing those numbers. Uh, if you want more horizontal and more vertical, you can increase those numbers. It's just that it's important that what number you actually um, are okay with going with you you do that for the outside and the inside surface you rebuild them with the same values okay so I'm gonna make a new layer and this is gonna be called um, this will be my horizontal wireframe okay so I'll start to organize these so here's my horizontal curves this is gonna be my horizontal wireframe I'll, uh, I'll make that the current layer and I'm going to use the command extract wireframe. Okay, and it extracts it and it puts it on the current layer. So if I turn off these other layers, you're going to see the wireframe. And there it is. So it's like this cage. Now, I only need the horizontal um, sections. So I'm just going to go to a front view and I'm just going to go ahead and delete. Uh, 
I'm going to delete the vertical sections. Okay, so I have that. So I need a set of horizontal sections for the inside as well. So that is on my surfaces layer, and I actually hit it, so I'm going to type in show. So that is this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, isolate that. Okay, so remember, I have to rebuild this. And it remembers the values from previously, so I'm okay with that. And make sure that stays on the surfaces layer. Now I need to extract the wireframe from this one. Okay. And same thing, if I go to a front view, I can delete the vertical lines. And I'll type in show. Okay, so there's my two sets of curves. So remember, those were extracted from the surface. I'm not actually drawing those. And with more complex geometry, it would be very difficult to draw um, sections from your surface. This is a series of ellipses, so this could be easy to construct manually. But remember, this is more like the lamp that I showed you for the complex geometry. So the next step is to turn these 2D curves into 3D geometry. So I'm going to make another layer, and this is going to be, uh, these will be my horizontal slats. And I'll make that the current layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loft between the two horizontal rings. So I'll select those and I'll type in loft. Okay, and I'm just accepting the defaults. And I have to do that uh, for each one separately. Okay, so now that's uh, a single surface. Now I have to turn this uh, into uh, a 3D surface, something that has thickness. And for that, I'm going to use offset surface. And I'm going to do that in two directions. So I need both sides equals yes. I want it to be solid, so I need solid equal yes. And my distance, I'm going to make it half of my total thickness. So my total thickness was 0.125 or 18. So I'm going to make it a 16. So I'm going to make that 0 0.0625. Because it will offset 0 0.0625 up and 0 0.0625 down. Uh, zoom scale is a, is a nice command if you're having trouble orbiting um, because you've zoomed too far in or out. I can select the geometry, type in ZS, and it resets the orbit scale. Okay, so now I don't have to do that um, uh, individually. I can select all of these surfaces. So I'm making sure just to get the surfaces. I could probably uh, turn off the wireframe layer. That would help. Okay, so I can select all of these, type in offset, and I'm looking for offset surface. Uh, distance 0 0.0625, solid yes, both sides equals yes. Okay, so now we have our horizontal slats. So we have to do the exact same process one more time for the vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. This is going to be my vertical curves. Okay, so these vertical um, slats, 
they're going to grab the outside of these so you'll see that in a moment so what I need to do is I need to go back to my horizontal curves and I'm going to make my vertical curves current I'm going to turn off these slats Okay, my horizontal curves, they must be hidden, so I'm going to type in show. Okay, there they are. These are the, uh, these are the original. So I'm going to take this outer ring and I'm going to offset it in and out um, 0 0.0625. And I'm making sure my vertical curves layer is current. I'm going to type in offset. It's just a regular offset. Uh, there is a both sides option and my distance is going to be 0 0.0625 and I'm going to do that for each one I have to click on both sides each time unfortunately okay so now if I turn off my horizontal curves I'm left with these rings. So I'm, I'm going to do the exact same process except this time I'm looking to keep my vertical curves. Okay, so um, what I didn't name last time is this: these were my horizontal surfaces because I'm going to need one for my vertical. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer this is going to be my my vertical surfaces I'm going to select my inside curves and I'm going to loft okay so you can see already that that's going to be a poly surface so these curves also need to be rebuilt because we offset them so I have those selected I'm going to type in rebuild and I think before we had a point count of 10 I know I made the top 120 okay now let's go ahead and loft okay so that's that's good that's our inside and let's just continue with this we have our inside we're going to rebuild it so we're rebuilding the surface uh, we have 10 and 8 and I'll click OK and then we're going to extract the wireframe but I need a layer for that so this will be my vertical wireframe I'll make that current and I'll go ahead and extract the wireframe and I'll hide everything else Okay, so now I can go to a front view and I can get rid of the horizontal lines. Okay, so that's my first set of vertical curves. Now I just need the outside. So I can go back and turn on my vertical curves. And I can go ahead and loft between those looks like my inside curves ended up on the surfaces layer not the end of the world but just wanna make sure that that stays organized Okay, so I'll go ahead now and loft the outside surface. Just making sure I select these outside curves. Typing in loft. Okay, so again, those need to be rebuilt because we did an offset and now we're seeing that that's going to be a poly surface. So I can go ahead and select those and rebuild them and then lock
Okay, so now I can rebuild this surface. And I can extract the wireframe. I just want to make sure my vertical wireframe layer is current. And go to my front view. And I can delete the horizontal curves. Okay, so now I need to make my lofted surfaces in between these. So I'm going to make a new layer now, and this layer will be my vertical slats. I'll make that current so I can make a lofted surface in between these. Again, I have to do each one at a time, one at a time. Okay, yeah, full 360 there. I'm back where I started. Okay, so now I can uh, I can offset these surfaces. And I'll just do one to begin with, but then I can do them all together. So my distance is 0.0625. It's half of my total distance. Solid equals yes. Both sides equals yes. Okay, so I can do, that's working, so I can do the remaining. Okay, so let's turn on our horizontal slats. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this, and I'm going to copy it over a distance that I can remember for when I need to copy it back. So I'm going to use 6 inches. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and subtract my vertical slats from my horizontal slats. So that will make the slats, it will make the notches rather in the horizontal slats. So I'm going to do this from a front view. It's just a little easier. So I'm going to use the command Boolean difference. It says select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. Those are going to be my horizontals. Enter. <clears throat> select surfaces or poly surfaces to su subtract with, delete input yes and those are going to be my vertical okay my uh, my vertical wireframe layer is still on so you see those and we'll go back to perspective so you can see that we have those notched out now I'm going to do the same thing over here except for the verticals so I'll go to my front view, I'll type in Boolean difference, select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. Those are going to be my, my verticals. Select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with. Those will be my horizontals. Okay, so now I have uh, both sets of those. Now, what I need to do is I need to extract the 2D geometry because we're laser cutting or CNC. So I have to go back to 2D. So it's just this process of going from 2D to 3D and back to 2D. So I'm just going to pick uh, one of these rings uh, as an example. I would have to do every one, but for right now I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to copy it over 6 inches. Okay, and I'm going to extract, uh, not extract the wireframe, I'm going to duplicate the bottom edge. Okay, so I'm going to use the command dupe edge for duplicate edge. And I'm going to pick all of the bottom edges. Now, it'd be good to have another layer also for all these to go on as well. Um, but I have this off to the side, so I'm going to, I can use my window selection, just making sure that I'm picking uh, only the bottom edges. 
is going around here making sure I can use my control key to get rid of ones that I don't want and my shift key uh, to add I'm using the shift key to add to the uh, selection And then I also need the inside edge. So this has a thickness. Okay, so that's dupe edge. I can hit enter. And then I can get rid of the 3D geometry. Okay, so you know now these edges are single curves. I want to join it all together. And it won't join the inside curve because it's you know nothing's connected there, but I'm just selecting everything for to make my life easier and I'm typing in join and now that's one closed curve and that's another now these things are floating in space which is not good for for the CNC or, or, or for laser cutting so I want to select both of them and I'm going to use project to C plane delete input objects I'll say yes so now that's flattened so now I have one ring I have the 2D geometry for one ring that I can actually send to the laser cutter or to the CNC so the horizontal curves are easier the vertical curves there's just one extra step um, the vertical slats I have to rotate these down so that they're flat so I'm gonna take this one and I mean the best thing is to leave your existing geometry the best thing is to you know copy these things off to the side so I'm gonna copy that over six inches then I'm gonna take it and go ahead and rotate 3D and sometimes it's tricky to, to know which axis but I'm gonna start with this and end with that and then that should be you know a 90 degree rotation and that's flattened out and then I can <clears throat> go through the same process where I duplicate uh, the edges and I join the curve uh, and that will that will give me my vertical slats okay that's it for the sectioning tutorial